Welcome to video two in the three part series on neck pain and rowing. In this video, we're gonna talk about, based on the things from video one that you might find that you're doing from rowing, what are some drills that you can do on the rowing machine or tips that you can do um, to basically try and help alleviate one of the things or many of the things that you might be doing that might be contributing to your neck pain. So to start, Really, if you're having something where you're at the catch position and you're not sure about your neck position or your head position, you can put something on the wall in front of you that is at your eye level. If you just sit up, stick something straight at your eye level and try and focus on that object while you're rowing. That's the first tip. Second tip is something called the pick drill. Now, if you're having one of those things at the beginning, um, I talked about why it might be happening in video one, where you might not be getting that connection to the machine. So one of the exercises you can do is this beginning of the pick drill, where your legs are straight, uh, your hips, you're already kind of in that backward position if you're looking at a clock, up towards uh, the ceiling, 12, or up, yeah, ceiling is 12, and then you've got 11 and one. So you're getting into that back, or back position, and all you're gonna do is take your arms and put them out, and then back in. So what this is doing is kind of showing you how much your arms are really doing. So if you're feeling a lot more in your arms when you're doing the stroke, this is really the majority of it. So the connection does come from your hands, through your butt and your feet, and vice versa. But really our arms and our shoulders aren't taking a large amount of the work or the beating. Our legs are doing most of it. So if you just get used to kind of what this feels like, that can help you when you're at the catch. Now you will have a tiny bit more when you're at the catch, especially in the first stroke or two. But for the most part, it should start to turn into just feeling like this. Uh, so just doing this can kind of help you understand that. So you can kind of do that as a practice. Another part that contributes to that is actually where you're holding the handle. And I've got a whole video on gripping, uh, but try and have your hands nice and loose, pinky over the edge so you're nice and wide and your hands are kind of in front of your shoulders. Uh, but if you have a nice loop, loose grip, you're less likely to overuse the arms and kind of cause a upwards motion with your trap muscles. So if you're doing the leaning back with your head or with your shoulders at the beginning, what happens is we're really overusing the shoulder muscles and we end up kind of shrugging our shoulders, which really overuses our upper trap muscles, which connects to the base of our skull, which means if we're overusing these and we're constantly kind of doing a shrug when we're doing the motion, then man, shoulders, neck, all of that can really get on fire and get aggravated. Um, so learning that nice, smooth, keep your shoulders down when you're doing that beginning of the pick drill and just keeping it nice and light can help your body learn, oh, I don't need to come up to bring my shoulders back. Just bringing your arms straight back. And in video three, I have an exercise that works on those muscles to help enforce that as well. So another thing that you can do if you are leading with the head or the shoulders is the reverse pick drill, which is trying to get your body to understand this connection between your handle, your butt, and your legs, and the machine, and how it moves. So really try, if you can, have that nice loose grip. Have your shoulders kind of already pre-engaged where you're not shrugging your shoulders. But you ideally want things to be a little bit loose, but not so loose that we're kind of over rounding and shrugging like this. Um, so when you're here, all you're gonna do is keep your hip the same angle with that 11 and one o'clock, and we're gonna keep our arms straight. Now you're gonna do is push back with the legs, and then bend the knees back in, push out with the legs. And even here, you should be able to feel that there's not too much going on with our hands. So really, if it's similar to when we're doing that pick drill where you're back here and you're feeling like it's not much with your arms, you should be feeling it similarly with this reverse pick drill type of exercise. So just being here and doing this back and forth can kind of help you, your body understand not to start and initiate the stroke with opening our hips, leading with our shoulders and getting our head backwards. Those are the primary exercises that I'd recommend working on on the rowing machine. 
Incorporate them in before you do your rows. So do about 10 to 15 of them, whichever one you're finding is most helpful for you. And then during the row, pick something to work on. Maybe it's the looking at something. Maybe it's the really pushing with your legs and not opening at the hips first. Um, or it's back here, keeping your head, again, at something that kind of helps you um, just keep your eyes level so that you're not bringing your neck downwards. Choose something to work on to help throughout your row because when we start to think of 20 things that we need to fix and work on, honestly, we start falling apart more. So choose one, work on that during your rowing workout and see if it helps at all. Uh, but those are some tips and tricks for on the rowing machine. If you found this helpful, please, Give a little thumbs up, let me know that you found it helpful, um, and leave your questions below, and I will jump on making a video like this one for you, and I hope that this was helpful. All right, happy rowing, everybody. Oh, and video three goes over exercises to help with this, um, and it'll be out shortly.